Hey everyone, it's Emily from Life So Savory, and today we're going to make something cozy, snuggly, and perfect if you're having winter weather, which is kind of happening around here. It's gray and dreary and not super nice out, um, even though it's not really cold here. Uh, even though last, last week was freezing, uh, I mean below freezing, and this week is a little bit more moderate, so we are surviving. However, you can't go wrong sewing this project. So today we're going to sew a comfy and that is the brand name. And I can't technically say that that's what we're making, but we're going to make a DIY comfy, which is essentially a wearable blanket with a hood and it's amazing. All right. So you can wear this around the house. My kids love them, which I've already made one for my daughter. Today, I'm going to make one for my son, and it's going to be comfy, cozy, and beautiful. So um, thanks to those of you saying hi, jumping on. If you're just joining, we are sewing a comfy, cozy, wearable blanket, whatever you want to call it. It's easy and quick to sew, and today, that's what we're going to make. So I'm glad you're here to join me. Let me just show you the one that I already made. So it is essentially a square of fleece with a hood. Can you, it's hard to see if it's even a hood and arm cuffs. Okay. So that's what makes it stay in place is you put your arms. I don't know if I can fit my arms through this one. It's my daughter's barely through the arm cuffs, put the hood over your head or just wear it and stick your head out the hole. And you have a cozy, comfy, wearable blanket that is so simple to make and so fun to wear. So this is a pretty tie-dye one that I made for my daughter. And then today we are going to make a version for my son because he's been asking for one out of this um, green plaid fleece. And I actually bought this last year to make it and I never got around to it. So he's been asking, mom, when am I gonna get my comfy? And of course the Christmas break, he wanted it. Ooh. My blade's open. That's not good. Um, he wanted over Christmas break and I just didn't get around to it and I wanted to do it for a live show. So the, the link to the full tutorial is in the description of this video on both YouTube and Facebook. So if you want one, the free hood download pattern, there's a um, link to both an adult size and a kid size. Um, you can grab that and then it also walks you through step by step but this video is going to give you pretty much besides the printable hood, everything you need to recreate this project. It's simple and easy and we're going to get started. Okay. So today we're sewing a hooded wearable blanket. I suppose you could make it without the hood and just put a band or a binding around the neck opening. I wouldn't just leave the fleece raw because it tends to stretch once you've cut it on the angle or the bias there in the center. You can leave the edges raw, which we totally will. Um, but I wouldn't cut a circle and then leave it because I think that would just stretch out. But if you put a bounding and we can talk about that, I can show you what I where I sort of think you could put that. Um, but we will go from there. OK, so I have uh, my son's measurements, which I'm trying to think oh, I wrote them here. So in order to make one of these, you need two measurements of yourself or your child. OK, arms out, you need wrist to wrist. Okay. That is 52 inches on my son. And you're just going to go full wrist to wrist, even though we're adding a cuff, because it just gives a little bit more room and a little bit more wearability. Second, you need over the shoulder and down your body to however long you want your blanket to be. So if you want it to go to your knees, you need to measure from one knee up and over your shoulder and down to the back of your knee. Okay. So you're going to create a rectangle and um, of course, the smaller you are, the smaller it will be. The larger you are, the more it will get to be the full width of the fleece, which is 60 inches. So if you have a wider wingspan than 60 inches, you'd either have to sew another piece on there, make the cuffs longer. Um, for myself, my kids, that's enough. I'm trying to, my son is 52. Let me see how long mine is real quick if I was making it for myself. I can't see my husband wearing this, so I'm thinking it's mostly for kids <laughs> and women, but okay, so mine is like 54, so it could even be quite a bit longer to go all the way to 60 inches um, if that was you. So you could be, I'm 5'5", five five, 
I think you could be uh, definitely several inches taller than me and still make it work with one width of fleece, which is usually 60 inches. Okay, so here I have the fleece. You can see it's this wide, which is way wider than I need it to be. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do because I don't know if I measured, let me see how much fleece I have. One, I think I only have two yards. So I might have needed a little bit more for my son. Um, I'm gonna cut the hood because that takes up fabric. And then from there, we will adjust and see how big we can make it, how long we can make it um, going down around him. So when I measured kind of from above his knee over into the other side of his knee, it was about 60 inches. And that's how long he would prefer it to be. But if I can't make that in the hood, then I'll have to shorten it. So you definitely, depending on the bigger the kid, will need more um, length of your fabric, more yardage, okay? I would say I probably should have gotten two and a half of this to be a little bit safer, but I didn't. And I bought this last year, so there's no going back to buying more because it doesn't even exist anymore. Actually, let's slide this up. Okay, so uh, I think the directions say for smaller kids, you can have one and a half to two. And then for adults, you need two to three. Definitely probably more on the side of the three yards to be able to make this. Okay. Yes. Bright fabric on a cloudy day. Um, so I don't know if it says it on here, but you need to cut two. I probably should have added that. In the directions, that's what it says. Okay, so you're gonna cut two hoods. This is not really lined. We're just gonna hem the front and it works. Okay, so cut two hoods. I needed to change my blade on my rotary cutter, but I thought, oh, I'm gonna cut this fleece first. <laughs> so I don't know if this is kind of hard on it, cutting through the fleece, um, but I'm gonna change it after I do this project. So if it looks like it's dull, it is, and I know it. All right, so we have two hoods cut. I'm gonna set that to the side, and now let's see what we have left um, to work with. Okay, so we'll sort of cut off these scraps. And then the other part of this bit of fabric here, I'm gonna to use to make cuffs. Uh, you could use it to make the binding. If you don't have enough to cut a hood, like I said, you could probably um, put a binding around the neck and I'll talk about that in a minute. All right. So I know it's 60 lengthwise from salvage to salvage. So let me see how much I still have going the other way. And maybe we'll just turn it that way. All right. So this is 35, 45, 45, 55. And we needed, let me look. 52. Okay. So perfect. So I'm going to trim off more off the side. I was just hacking at to make it even. And then that will be the side to side. So fleece doesn't really matter. You can turn it either way, which makes it easy to work with. And I'm going to just go ahead and cut on one of the lines of the plaid sort of straight up here, taking about three inches off, straightening up the edge from where I cut the hood to. It is most of the time, Diana, but there are people who have a plus or a minus on that. My son and my husband have freakishly long arms and they're about three inches longer on their wingspan than they are on their height. And it shows because all of their clothes are too short in the arms. My, sore, my poor son, he's like trying to get a dress shirt on. He's like, dad, the arms are too short. My husband's like, yeah, welcome to the rest of your life. You just get to have clothes that are too short because otherwise you got to buy huge in the middle to get a little bit longer arms. So most people, yes, most people, yes. Um, 
you can go fingertip to fingertip. But we're not making it all the way to the floor or as long as you are tall. So it's not quite a square because it's going to be longer probably over your shoulders than it is side to side um, most of the time. Okay. So uh, anyway, all right. So we have the rectangle cut. I'm going to fold it in half doubly. Okay. So I'm going to do a double fold like I was making a circle skirt or something, but it's not going to be a complete square because again, um, it's a rectangle, 52 inches side to side approximately and approximately 60 inches on the over the shoulder measurement. All right. So here I have my center which is a double fold, a fold this way and two folds this way, raw edges around the, the sides. We're just going to leave those raw and we're going to cut out the neck hole in just a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to cut the cuffs for the arm. Okay. So let's see, we have a nice straight edge here. You can make the cuffs as long or as short as you want there. I did give you dimensions in the post. Now I can't think of exactly what those were. So uh, my son probably has similar wrists to me, so I'm going to use my wrist as a guide. But you can also use, you know, whoever you're making this for. You want it to be snug around the wrist, but not too snug. I'm just kind of cutting a rectangle here, and then we will, let's see. Cut that. So it's about eight inches wide by probably about eight inches. It's probably about an eight inch square. Okay, fold it in half. If there's any stretch, you want it going side to side. And fleece usually has stretch one direction. So we got a little bit going this way, none going up and down. And then I'll use this cuff as the guide for the second cuff. All right, we have a hood. We have two cuffs. Now it's time to cut the neck opening. So you could measure sort of around how big you want the neck opening to be. I believe, I'm gonna check, actually check the tutorial. Click over here. Um, that on, for most kids, I said that I think 22 inches is a good neck opening, okay? A, and, and on my daughters, it's plenty big. So we're going to go the same for my son. And then just like a circle skirt, you multiply 22 inches times 6.28 because that's uh, the circ like, because you're just doing a quarter, right? We have four pieces here. So we really just want to cut a quarter of the circle. So using the same math for a circle skirt, um, we would do that. So it's 6.28 double the, um, not the width, but the amount of pi, 3.14. So 6.28 multiplied by 22 is, I have it on here, uh, 3.5, okay? Now, I did find when I made roses that I felt like it stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to make it just under 3.5. And from, you take your double fold place of your corner, and you're going to mark around, we're going to go just under the 3.5 mark, okay? So maybe 3.3-ish. I'm just using a regular marker here. This is not a fabric pen because I'm going to cut it. We're going to sew the hood on. You'll never see it. I have yet to find a fabric pen that I feel like gives me a good, strong mark and doesn't disappear while I'm working with it. Okay, so cut out the circle. You have a little fun, you should have a fun circle. Now at this point, definitely we're gonna try this on just to make sure. And looks like I need to do it. No, I don't wanna do it that way because that way is the wider way. Okay, all right, so it fits. My goodness, look at, I can wear this one. So cozy. Okay, so we're getting there. All right. 
Um, so we have the opening. I know that for me, the salvage is going front and back, not side to side. So I probably, in the end, will cut off this little strip here that says, uh, what does it say, Joanne? Exclu uh, designed exclusively for Joanne is what it says, okay? So I'll probably cut that salvage off front and back so my son doesn't have it. I'm gonna leave it for now until I get the arm cuffs on so that I know that that's the front and back and um, I know what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna fold this again evenly so that we can put the cuffs and the hood and all that good stuff and not get things mixed up. Okay, so I have it even with my neck opening in the center. Now, um, what I would do if I just wanted to put a ribbing around there, which could be cozy, you could make it a little bit taller like a turtleneck, is just to take some fleece, stretch the stretch going side to side and cut maybe three inch wide pieces. So that when you fold it in half, it's an inch and a half. Uh, measure around like a circle, take off your 10%-ish. You probably can't get more than that because this fleece doesn't have a lot of stretch. Uh, sew it up and put it on just like a neckband, okay? So if you wanted to do that instead of adding the hood, um, that would be pretty easy to do. And I would do that instead of just leaving this so that it doesn't continue to just stretch out. Because now that we've cut the fabric, it can stretch out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to prepare the hood and... Um, the arms. I'm actually going to do the arms while I'm over here because I think it will be easier to do while it's um, open and flat like this. But we can, because otherwise I'm going to turn the camera and we're going to go over and do all the sewing goodies. All right. So from the center of the sides, okay, so I found the center here. You're going to open this up. So the middle, right down, right down my shoulder, the middle of that. You're gonna take one of the cuff pieces and you're gonna match the middle of the cuff with the middle of the blanket. And we're just doing it open, right? This is just the open cuff. It's kind of hard to see, plaid on plaid. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna lay this out right like that. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make sure I have the middle. This will just be harder to do over at my sewing area, so that's why I'm doing it up here. The hood I think I can pin on just fine over there. Okay, take the center of the cuff. Oh, yay, well, I'm glad you're here now. Yes, you can replay it on both Facebook and YouTube when I'm finished. On Facebook, the easiest way to be able to find the replay is to share it to your timeline so you don't have to go back and scroll through mine. But on YouTube, just make sure you look under lives. It's not always on the front page when you go to my channel, which all social media, I'm at Life So Savory. And I don't know why on YouTube you have to go to the special like live tab once it's over. I find that a little bit confusing. But anyway, you can definitely find it there. Okay, so we have pinned the cuffs on the edge and we have cut out the center and I've also prepared the hood. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is sew the hood together and hem the front. You don't have to, but it's easy and it actually is really simple to do. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So we're going to work on the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my um, camera around facing it at my sewing machines. Let's go ahead and turn this down a little bit. I'm gonna start at the serger and then I'll go over to the sewing machine right here so we can move it around. So on the serger, we are just going to sew from the front down the back, the curved edge. Okay, so we're gonna start at the center the center seam and I have white on here and even with it being a piece of cake to change the thread am I going to change it nope I'm just going to keep going actually it's cream it'll be the inside of the hood not a big deal fleece doesn't usually have a front and a back but if your fabric does and of course you want to make sure you're sewing this right sides together 
like I mentioned at the beginning, there is a free hood download in the written tutorial of this. So if you're looking for this hood pattern, it comes in both kid sizes and adult sizes. It's just a few pages to print out, super simple. So go ahead and grab that um, if you want to make this, or you could trace a hood that you already have. And there. I know I have my sewing machine, other sewing machines are over actually in the kitchen because tonight I'm volunteering at a girls' group at our church and um, we're doing a sewing night. So I'm taking two my two smaller machines um, with me, which is why I have them over ready to go. I don't usually have machines over <laughs> on the other on the other side of the room, but today I do because yeah, I'm taking them with me tonight. Okay. So I've just been leaving this, this machine is so big and I've just been leaving the embroidery unit on. And then when you hit sewing, the, this piece just kind of moves out of the way and I have a big sewing bed. So I know that we kind of discussed this before and a couple of you said, oh, you're too afraid that like pins are going to fall in there. But it has been working out really well for me just to leave it assembled. And then I can use it for sewing and embroidery, whatever I want, just because I don't actually really have a convenient place to store this embroidery unit um, if I were to put just the sewing box back on. So, all right. So to make this hood finish the edge, you could just probably leave this. It wouldn't really be a big deal, but we're just gonna fold back about a half inch and zigzag along the edge. And because it's so, you know, puffy is kind of the right word, the stitches just sort of disappear into the fleece and it looks actually really good. Okay, so I'm pinning back. I know some of you are shocked I'm using pins. Pinning back about a half inch on the front of this hood. And fleece has a tiny bit of stretch, so that helps um, the curves to lay nicely. I'm trying to think what I have in here. I have like a I need to put a matching, more matching thread so that it does do what I say as it disappear. I got a cream on the top and I don't know, sort of a brownish orange on the bottom. So we're going to change that. Okay, so pinning on both sides, half inch to the wrong side, right? This is the wrong side because that's where we already sewed that seam. Trying to think. All right, I just, yeah. I, Julianne, I found it has been very convenient. Now I'm still fairly new with this machine. I don't know if I had it for three or four months now, but I don't know. It seems convenient for me to just leave the arm on. If I had a cabinet big enough to store the inverter unit right here, I might do that, but my extra machines and parts are down in the basement so it's i don't really want to be hauling it around all the time all right let's change some thread see if we can get something more coordinating so that the stitches just sort of disappear in this yeah. i don't know if i really have a great well, black will work i don't know if i have a great uh selection going here black is better than brown Okay, so we will put, thread the machine. It's already set on sewing. I have my, I have just a universal needle in place. I have my regular sewing foot on because I was using, sewing this as a sewing machine earlier today. So we're all set to just use it as a sewing machine. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna sew with a zigzag um, from the wrong side because I put black on the bottom, but I wanna sew right on the edge of this and watch it just sort of disappear into the puff of the fleece, okay? At least it did last time I made it, no, it will. All right, so we're just gonna Stitch right along the edge. Okay. 
and you'll be able to see my stitches but in the end you just can't really see where the edge of the one edge of the fabric starts and the other one begins i mean i, I should the automatic presser foot is on. I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm just gonna actually lengthen the zigzag a little bit. I don't need it so tight. I can't decide if I wanna sew over the pins or I wanna pull them out. I've done a little bit of both here. If this were all one color and I had matching thread, you absolutely wouldn't even see it at all because on the black parts, it's absolutely hidden. But of course on the green parts, my black thread is a little bit more apparent. But I'll show you up close what it looks like. I just think this is the simplest method for finishing the edge of the hood. And I think a lined fleece hood would just be a little bit too bulky. So I'm doing it this way. All right, so here is the inside. So you can see it just, if I zigzag right on the edge of that, it just sort of blends right in with what I'm doing. And then there's the front side. And, and of course on the darker, it blends in perfectly. So really it just more looks like a binding. You can't see any raw edge. I sewed right on the raw edge of that fleece. And so now there's no longer any sort of edge of fleece showing. Okay, so it looks like a really nice finish on the hood and I don't, I'm not, I'm not looking at a raw edge of fabric, which is what I want to avoid. Okay, so we have the hood. We have the cape, which I'm gonna grab here. All right, and I'm gonna slide this back. Hopefully. All right, so that I can, uh, Put this together and show you what I'm doing. Actually, while I'm, um, can you see there? Okay, before I do the hood, because I already pinned on or um, clipped on the cuffs, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew those because I don't want them to like fall off or anything. Okay, so remember in the center of the shoulder, down at the wrist edge of this cape, we pinned this cuff. It has a folded edge here, it has two raw edges here. And I'm just going to actually go ahead, and I think I'm going to zigzag it. I don't think I'm going to surge it. Um, one, because of the color situation going on, and two, I think it's going to look just as nice. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to surge, or I'm going to sew along that edge with the three raw edges of fabric. Okay, so one from the blanket and two raw edges from the cup. And we're going to sew these three layers of fabric together. Okay, so looks just fine on there. Don't have to worry about fraying, so I don't really have to finish the whole thing. So here's what it looks like now. The cuff is sticking off the edge of the blanket. Okay, I'm going to go do the other one. Find the other side. That's the one I just sewed. Okay, here it is. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually, we're gonna pin in the hood so I can do that with the camera farther back. And then I'm gonna bring it farther forward and closer so you can see actually what I'm sewing. But cuff number two is sewn on. So again, I'm gonna find, if this is the center, then I'm gonna fold this back to find the center of the front opening. It's not lower in the front or lower in the back. It's just a circle. You could, I guess, uh, fold it a little bit unevenly so that the back was a little bit higher, but I'm not worried about that. We're just making it, it's a wearable blanket. 
it's there's nothing precise about this so we just have the opening okay so what we are going to do if these are the shoulders that i'm kind of holding up here actually i want my clips okay so these are the shoulders that i'm holding up actually we're gonna just make sure that we have everything then we're also going to mark the front and the back. So I'm going to put a pin on the top of the shoulder on both sides. And then we're going to match up those two pins. And then we can have the parts that we're calling the front and the back. As of right now, there's no real front and back on this hooded blanket because uh, it's just even. Okay, with the hood, of course, we're going to create a front and a back because the hood has a front and a back. So I'm just making sure one more time that I'm working from the right side of the blanket. I can't see the seam on the outside of this cuff. So I'm looking at the right side. So with right sides together, I'm now going to pin the center back seam of the hood to the center back marking of the blanket. And this time we're going to pin around to the front. Or I'm going to clip. We're going to clip around from the back to the front. Now, what you need in this opening is you need the ends of the hood to overlap, okay? Because that's how we finish the neckline. So maybe before you cut your opening, if you're not using my measurements, you want to make sure that the bottom edge of the hood is as big around as the circle. If you were cutting a bigger circle, um, this one works perfect for 22 inches. In fact, it probably would go to 24 inches because it has a couple inches of overlap and you need at least a half inch of overlap so that you don't have any raw neckline of the hood open. All right, so when we get around to the front and we're overlapping that front, we're gonna have more layers of fleece. Why is there a bobbin in here? Um, so I'm just overlapping it and then making sure it's laid flat around the outside of the neckline. Okay, so you can see here that the front of the hood is overlapping. So see that? Okay, and that's just going to make a really nice front plus fully finish that neckline. If the pieces just touch, then you're, it's just not going to look as pretty because you're going to have like raw edges touching. So you want at least a little bit of overlap around that neckline so that it just sort of looks like a finished um, neck opening. All right, I am going to surge this to make sure it's just a really nice, secure, stable stitch, which for me, the best thing to do is, that, is surge it. And as I go around, I'm going to have spots where I have just two layers of fleece. I'm starting in the back. Just two layers back here, one layer of blanket, one layer of hood. But as I get closer to the front, we're and we overlapped and we have the hood edge where we folded it over, we're gonna have more layers. So it will get thicker and I have, to, it's not a huge opening. So I have to keep rotating the fabric in the circle. But when you get around to where the overlap is, then you're going to want to make sure you're overlapping those or that you're catching all the layers. And I need a bigger desk <laughs> for all these machines. If I didn't catch all the layers in this first time, I'll either go back and do it with a zigzag. Um, I think there's one spot where I might have missed one of the layers, but I will check that before we sort of walk away and finish this neckline. whatever seam allowance you are more comfortable with all right it does not really matter it's up to you to find the the oh yeah we got a hole 
Um, find the seam allowance that is most comfortable for you. So do what uh, is most comfortable. All right, we're sewing back over the front here. The overlaps, catching where we missed. There's a little spot here. I'm going to zigzag down. This little tail didn't get caught from the other side. But otherwise, oh, I see another little hole here. Okay, I guess I didn't do a super great job, but good thing we can fix it. Don't walk away from your serger until you're sure there's no more holes around the neck. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna pull this closer so you can get a better look at just the sewing part of this or this. Um, hi, Pam. This is the Brother Airflow 3000. So it's an air threading serger, which is beautiful and amazing, but otherwise it's just a serger. So that's the machine um, that I'm using. All right, so can you see here, I've got this little flap and I want that to lay nicely. So we're gonna zigzag over that. I can get this in all this bulk in my machine. You could go ahead and actually top stitch the whole neckline if you wanted. I don't think I want to, but let's just have that laying down so that it's not flipping up and looking weird. Okay, so literally one more step to finish this. I'll try it on, it's my son's. He's just a couple inches shorter than me, so it actually should go uh, pretty well. And that is to finish the cuff. So again, this is the wrong side, this is the right side. Wrong side is where you see the seams. So you're gonna fold the right sides together and we're literally just going to sew up the edge of the cuff. You can use your serger. You can use a zigzag on your sewing machine, on your sewing machine, which is what I'm going to do here. It's four layers of fleece, so it's a little bit thick. But I would think 99% of sewing machines won't have a problem. Fleece is pretty squishy and easy to sew. Make sure you backstitch because the edge of that cuff might get a little bit of wear and tear. And then you're simply going to turn it right side out. And you have the cuff on the end of the faux sleeve, which really isn't a sleeve at all. It's just the edge of the blanket. So second cuff, we're gonna go ahead and turn it right sides together. I like sewing from the outer edge of the cuff, but you can sew however you want. If you want to sew just a little bit down the blanket to close that, you could do that too. You don't have to stop at the bottom of the cuff. You could actually go down like an inch just to close the side. And if you felt like that was going to be more secure. Um, I can't remember what I did on roses. On this one, I just stopped at the bottom of the cuff. But you can do however you um want to do it. I just wouldn't sew too far down the blanket because I feel like that's restricting. I like the sides of the blanket open. So, all right, let's turn this right side out. Cute little cuff right there. And we're ready for a try on. Super fun and easy. Yeah, it is squishy <laughs> compared to some fabrics that aren't squishy. I'm going to call the, <laughs> the fleece squishy. Okay. So I think this should fit me pretty well. My 13 year old isn't a whole lot shorter than me. Um, so we'll get a, an idea of what it looks like. My head's probably a little bigger than his. So if the hood doesn't, it's a little bit, maybe small on the hood, but it works. And then, so you can put the hood on, then you put your hands through the cuffs. It's a little bit small. And you have a totally wearable blanket cuddly cozy how fun is that right and it doesn't slip or slide because the cuffs are attached to your arms 
So you don't have to worry about it falling over, falling back, twisting around, even if you're not wearing the hood. I need a little bit of your hood. I got big hair. Um, but there you go. It's easy and you can make it in any size just with your measurements. I'm just going to show you here. This is my daughter's. She's been wearing it for a year. Same size hood, a little bit smaller um, rectangle of fabric, the two cuffs for her and very easy. So there you go. That's my fun tutorial for today. I feel like I'm Scottish or Irish or something in this green flag, but maybe my son can wear this on St. Patrick's Day and not get pinched. But remember, if you want to sew this and want the printable hood, it the link is in the written tutorial as well as all these instructions laid out. So if you miss something today, you can always find it there as well as watch the replay of this video anytime. And this will get you started sewing a easy, simple, comfy, cozy, wearable blanket. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this sewing tutorial. We'll make something else fun next week. Join me again at 3 p.m. Eastern next Wednesday afternoon. I'll see you later. Bye.